held on Wednesday, January 14, 2015. Will everybody in the audience please rise to salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Ms. Kelly. Mr. Franti? Here. Ms. Gravelisi? Here. Mr. McGuire? Here. Mrs. Rizzo? Here. Ms. Pru Wood Pruitt? Present. Ms. Tai? Here. Uh, approval of minutes of the January 8, 2015 meeting. Second. Uh, so moved. Mr. Chairman, yes, I, have, I have a correction made for that. And Go ahead. That it should read, that we accept, comma, with regret, comma, the notice of retirement letter submitted by Dr. Paul Dakin, comma, and place it on file. I wanted to put in that we accept it with regret. Do we need a vote on this? Is there a second? You, have make, you have make, need a second. Second. All in favor, all opposed, so voted. Number three, superintendent's report. Superintendent Dakin. Uh, the, first, the first item in the report is um, about a statement of interest that I would um, like to file on behalf of the city and, and the city and the school department. <coughs> Sorry, I didn't have the mic on. A statement of interest, that, um, the School Building Assistance Bureau has a program that um, for accelerated repairs. And it's a grant program. And community city school departments can apply to this program when they have a repair that has to be made. Now, we know and we have long known um, with reports that we've got, even um, scanning reports of the Garfield roof, that that 25-year-old roof has to be replaced. It's met its age as far as warranties, guarantees. It's w leaking like a sieve. And when <coughs> we scanned the roof with high technology devices, uh, had a company in doing that, in hope that we could just repair spots, the damage is too extensive and um, calls for a complete new roof. That would end up being a couple of million dollar job. Um, similarly, we had, uh, two years ago now almost, a storm damage to the exterior wall in the back of the car field. Um, it was compromised during the storm, and um, that's another project. Uh, it's my thinking that both of these projects have to be done. We know, the city knows they have to be done. We're scratching our heads on how to get them done and how to get the funding. Um, this program exists for, um, for accelerated repairs. It's a grant program. But before I could apply to that grant program, it calls for a vote of the school committee and the city council to apply for the grant. So I can do all of the work, but I can't do the work, and they won't accept the work that I do explaining um, the problem with the roof and the problem uh, with the exterior wall unless there's a vote of the committee and the council. So I'm, you know, I'm here to, and it's obvious, it's a grant program, so we have to do these projects anyway, and it doesn't commit us or them to the fact because we put it in whether we'd get the grant. There's no commitment on their part, there's no commitment on our part. The only thing is, in order for me to apply and to do the work to apply, which is relatively extensive, they want a commitment, uh, a vote of the committee instructing me to do that. So, you know, I would hope that um, that we could get that done somehow. Ms. Gravelisi. I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to motion to vote to authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the statement of interest form dated February 11th, 2015 for the Garfield Community Magnet School, Garfield Elementary and Garfield Middle. Second. It's located at 176 Garfield Ave, which describes and explains the following deficiencies and the priority categories for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority. In the future, an application to the Accelerated Repair Program for a new roof system and replacement of a structurally unsound exterior wall 
and hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting the statement of interest form, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application. The awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority or commits the city, town, regional school district to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Second. Mr. Franti? Yes. Ms. Gravelisi? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Mrs. Rizzo? Yes. Mrs. Pruitt? Yes. Ms. Ty? Yes. I think that's a real wise move. There's money potentially there that we can capture that would help um, defray some of the costs of those two projects. Um, the second point I want to talk about is the closing of schools uh, during any weather situations. We had to call a cold day. Um, believe it or not, it's the third cold day I've had to call in my tenure. About eight or nine years ago, we had two cold days in a row. Um, the days, uh, you know, we, it, it's a tough, that's a really tough decision call. Um, some people were saying, why don't you go late? And um, going late, sometimes kids don't get the notice and they're out there waiting at bus stops anyway. And in the, a dangerous situation, the way things were, um, what was that, last Thursday? Thursday? Um, you know, you don't want that to happen. Even when we have a snow day, or a cold day. Kids arrive at schools anyway. So, and we were prepared for that on the cold day. We had um, people from the transportation department in uh, expecting that kids would show up, that we could get them home, and principals were taking care of that. And uh, of course, it happened. So, um, I, I would instruct folks the best way to find out, um, the quickest way to find <coughs> out, is through the Twitter account. Um, which is RPS underscore super. And then it starts to spread quicker than even watching the local television stations that get the information up there quickly once we um, notify them. And th they're notified simultaneous to, um, you know, to us sending the Twitter account, but it takes a while for them to get it logged in. And uh, I think the word spreads, and we haven't had a problem like that before. Even when we push everything out, we know kids are going to end up showing up at school. It's just the nature of the beast. So we're ready for that. But the quickest way for folks to find out is certainly the Twitter account, or and then uh, watching the regular Channel 5, Channel 7, Channel 4, um, where the information goes in very quickly. All right, wait a minute, Mr. Superintendent. Mr. McGuire, there's a question for you. I was just curious, Paul, that we didn't do a, a robocall for that. Is there a reason why? And some people complained to me that why didn't he do that? Uh, we didn't do a robocall uh, for any of the five snow days last year. Last year we did not use the robocall. And the main reason why, the year before when we used the robocall, um, it was flood. If you can remember, it um, it was put in at 5:30, and people didn't get a call till about 9:30 because the company we went to is not as was has not been as efficient in when there's a high priority and everybody's using that kind of service. It sort of got jammed. I haven't tested it since on a snow day because if I'm relying on the phone and the phone's going off at 9 o'clock, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, the message is not out anyway. What we can do, though, is test it again. And when Chelsea's sending it, Everett's sending it, to see if this pipe is big enough to handle all of us, it's an extra, and we can do that. But I, I would like to get parents not to rely on that call because the service hasn't been reliable. When we buy those services, we have to put it out to bid, and we go to the lowest bidder. And sometimes the lowest bidder isn't the best producer of services. Did we uh, utilize the uh, Revere School Channel and the government channels? Is that could that something you could do was, simultaneously with Twitter? Or? The, the government channel is tougher to access that remotely, but um, the web page it was up on the web page quickly. So it gets the web, it hits the web, it hits Twitter, it hits uh, the TV stations. And, and in all honesty, I, I they're going to hit there quicker than they're going to hit the robocall anyway. 
when the robocall goes, even if we get priority, it, we're in line, it's, it has to make 7,000 calls. And it's not like the first call is at the same time as the second call. If people want it quickly, uh, TV's the best, because we get it there instantly. <coughs> They'll see it there sooner than they would see uh, hear a robocall. Paul, I just have uh, two quick ones. Number one is it was on the Channel 5 app as soon as the announcement came out. So if you had that mm -hmm. Channel 5 app, it came out. And second of all, do we still have the same company making the robocalls? Or do we go to somebody else? No, we're in the same company because it's a three-year contract. And so what I, part are we I think this may be third year, and we, if they were the new bidder in the next round, we would eliminate them uh, because um, – we're not pleased with the service. We didn't want to go through some legal hoops and eliminating them during a contract. Okay. Um, so, but there's another way. I mean, I think we have to realize that last year, uh, we're all, even when we do the robocall, we're going to have kids showing up at school and people that don't know it. Uh, last year with five snow days, we really didn't get a call for people wanting the robo. I think here, though, when it's snowing out, people are in tune with the fact that there may not be school. Um, although if you watch Twitter, the, the kids were in tune that I was going to call a cold, a, a cold day. They certainly wanted it. Um, but if the, the freest flow of information is our <coughs> web page and um, the TV station, like I said, they're the, and the Twitter account are the quickest ways of doing it. And Dr. Kelly has a Twitter account, too, and we can have her start pushing it out as well. <laughs> Any quick, Ms. Pruitt? Um, Dr. Taken. When we do use the robocall, I'm sure there's a lot of numbers that are pushed back that you know, may have cell phone numbers, people don't have their cell phone or something like that. Is it something when we go out again or look to go out again that that company would take care of? Right now, we get, uh, for every uh, call that goes on, the principals still use this, and when they use it, it sort of hits out because every district in the state's not jumping on using that pipe. So if somebody has a play or something, <coughs> they'd still be sending something out to their particular school's clientele. Um, and, and it works pretty efficiently. Any time a, a call is made, we get a report back that tells how many people answered, how many answering machines were hit, how many bad numbers there are. When we get the bad numbers, we, auto, we go into autopilot, tracking out who that bad number belongs to, and dig out that student and family so that we can get a correct phone number from them. So that work is all done behind the scenes, and it was, it's a part of um, this particular company, and it was part of the previous companies that we had doing this work as well. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, continue, Mr. Uh, Superintendent. Uh, next thing I'm a I've, asked, I've asked Dr. Kelly to, um, you know, start to do some work on the middle school assignment plan, uh, the, the evil word lottery, and um, she's already started to think out some of that bit. Has talked to principals, and uh, turn it over and ask Dr. Kelly to give us uh, an update on the middle school assignment plan. Thank you, Dr. Dakin. So um, I did work a little bit with the, both the elementary and middle school principals over the last week. And what we're looking at is having the, um, the customary school tours take place the week after February vacation. Uh, last year we did them the week before, but it, with some other things that are going on in the district, the principals have decided that the week after would be better. So parents can look for permission slips to be coming home um, probably two weeks before a February vacation uh, in preparation for those tours to happen. We're working with the transportation department now to iron out a schedule for all of the kids to get around to each of the three middle schools. Um, and the timeline that we're looking at right now is the kids would take the tours and then on that Friday after the tours end, the kids would take home the middle school choice form, which would, they would fill out in conjunction with their parents in order to determine which was their first, second, and third choice middle school. Once all the forms come back in and we're able to process them, um, we'll know better whether or not there's need for a lottery this year. Um, as folks know, in the last several years, there has been need for a lottery. Um, 
I, you know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what the data shows this year. Uh, when we determine whether or not a lottery is needed, um, we will select a date. We're going to try to go for a Thursday night in March is, um, is what we're aiming for. And uh, we'll have more information as soon as we know whether or not the lottery is necessary and um, select a date, then we'll get that information out to parents as quickly as possible. Any questions for Dr. Kelly? <coughs> okay. Okay, uh, my final point is, you know, we have had a, some very good news in the past month or so. Um, just last week, um, actually this week it was, notice from the Nellie May Foundation that the district has been awarded a multi-year, multi-million dollar grant to um, influence student-centered learning throughout the district. The, the grant, a grant like this is usually focused on the high school, um, but they want district change. So even though the high school is the focus of the grant, the professional development, the opportunity, and the funding is going to be there to transition learning across all grades in the district. This is really the um, biggest um, amount of money we've ever got in a foundation grant. So, and I have to give credit to the, uh, high, the high school team who really developed this, and Dr. Garcia, who did a tremendous job. It stands the chance over a multi-year period, probably, you know, three and a half years with, you know, multi-millions of dollars to really transition learning to um, deeper levels um, using Common Core and using uh, a flipped and blended learning approach, embedding technology into learning with a lot of professional development um, for teachers. So that, that is, uh, you know, one heck of a, a hit in, in the past month. Likewise, Garfield Elementary School was on the uh, receiving end of a $20,000 grant uh, that they received and Garfield Middle School on a $10,000 grant. So, I mean, I don't think we've ever had a month where we've banged out this much money. And I've asked Principal Mokaba, Danielle Mokaba, to come to us and just give us a little background on um, the grant at the Garfield Middle School that she successfully um, put together. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, I give all of the credit to our technology teachers. They really came to me and said, this is an experience that we want for all of our students. They created a plan to expose all of our students to this, looking at our student schedules, looking at the week. Um, and we were fortunate. We submitted this plan to code.org. And we were able, we were the Massachusetts school selected uh, for the $10,000 um, Donors Choose grant. Um, we had a great celebration. We were joined by m many of you, um, the mayor, representatives from Microsoft and Mass TLC Ed Foundation. Um, and now we're at the phase where we are trying to determine how to spend that money. Um, the money has to go to our technology uh, program. And in meeting with the team, what they really wanted to do was look at how to expand our already strong technology program. So we, as you know, we have the one-to-one -one iPads in our eighth grade. Um, and we have all of our students have technology every year in 6th, 7th, and 8th. So we were looking to give more hands-on experiences. So some of the things that we're purchasing, um, we're looking at Lego Mindstorms to offer that sort of hands-on exposure. We're also looking at um, what's called a Raspberry Pi, which will give the students that hardware and networking experience, something that they can work with with their hands. We're looking at a 3D printer. We have an amazing design program. Um, so we're looking to expand that program so that kids can really see the hard product of some of the design and architecture in SketchUp work that they're doing. Uh, we're also looking at exploring. We're going to explore SNAP circuits to give that STEM feel to technology. And we're looking at where we want to expose kids to these different experiences. Um, and our 6th, 7th, and 8th grade tech teachers have been really open-minded and forward-thinking about what, how we want to spend this money, because it's not like another iPad will help us. We really wanted to look at expanding the technology program that we have in the enrichment classes that we can offer. Any Very questions? Good. Any questions for the committee? 
If I may. Ms. Tai? Um, will you, uh, I, I understand the wisdom of not providing just another iPad for a different group. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that many of those kids have their own iPads too. But, um, so will you do this in uh, the technology class alone? Or will there be an attempt to pull in, say, an English teacher and a science teacher and, and do something in, in that with that? Uh, where we plan to start that is the technology classes, but uh, we our, our technology teachers play two roles. They teach their traditional tech classes, right. um, but they also teach enrichment classes. So part of our um, challenge is to offer enrichment classes that students in the seventh and eighth grade in particular can select. So we're oh. looking at mm -hmm. This year we offered architecture, um, Minecraft, and several oh, other yeah, design yeah. courses. Yeah. So we're looking at what can we offer the students with these additional supports for next year. Oh, sounds great. Thank you. Any other questions? All set. Thank you. Thank you, Danielle. You're doing a fantastic job down at Garfield Middle. All set, uh, Superintendent. Uh, I think at this point we can move on to the... Okay. Um, Hill School approval of bills. Okay, um, next item agenda is Sergeant, Staff Sergeant James J. Hill School approval of bills for Hill School as recommended by the Building building Subcommittee, Ms. Gravelisi. Encumbrances, DRA PSS number 12, $59,950 for additional geotechnical and geoenvironmental construction and administrative services. So moved. Second. Uh, just a quick uh, explanation, Paul, with the difference of the amounts were. Yeah, this is a PSS 12, and you can see that it's um, starred and asterisked uh, on the form. We, we had already voted PSS 12, and when the information was conveyed to us from Hill Associates, um, the, the clerk who reported it only reported the first number which was 24500 I think, and I think that's what we voted for this bill. <clears throat> Sitting behind that in the next sentence was another um, amount of money that added together brought the total bill to 59950 Down the bottom of the uh, particular invoice was the total amount. So it was a clerical error. We had approved the, uh, a sub-portion of this. All the work has been done. Um, Mr. McGuire and Mr. Reardon and the, um, the bill payment subcommittee got this explanation in detail from um, Simon Tempest and Kate and um, we're extremely comfortable knowing that the um, this was a figure um, that was written wrong and it, it just has to be corrected. So this is a correction for additional geotech and geoenvironmental construction administration costs. So, Paul, they originally got paid the twenty. They originally got paid the twenty-four thousand. So we're only approving the difference. No, the payment hasn't oh, gone no, yet. Okay. It hasn't even moved off to city hall. So okay. this vote will be in time to okay. do it all correct. Okay. Roll call, Dr. Kelly. Mr. Franti. Yes. Ms. Gravelisi. Yes. Mr. McGuire. Yes. Ms. Pruitt. Yes. Mrs. Rizzo. Yes. Ms. Ty. Yes. Next. Invoices, CTA construction base. $1,460,266.20. Requisition number 11 for December services. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Franti? Yes. Ms. Gravelisi? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Ms. Pruitt? Yes. Mrs. Rizzo? Yes. Ms. Tai? Yes. Next. CTA construction CO number one. $10,434.80. Requisition number 11 for December services. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Franti? Yes. Ms. Gravelisi? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Ms. Pruitt? Yes. Ms. Riz Mrs. Rizzo? Yes. Ms. Tai? Yes. Next. DRA basic services. $37,513. Invoice number 12012 for December services. So moved. Roll call. Mr. Franti? Yes. Ms. Gravelisi? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Ms. Pruitt? Yes. Mrs. Rizzo? Yes. Ms. Tai? Yes. Next. DRA PSS number 7, 
$1,296. Invoice number 120107, December Services. Second. Um, all those in favor, all those opposed, so voted. Next. DRA PSS number 11. $935. Invoice number 120211, December Services. So moved. Second. All those in favor, all those opposed, so voted. Next. DRA PSS number 12, $49,089.57. Invoice number 120112, Services through December. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Franti? Yes. Ms. Gravelisi? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Ms. Pruitt? Yes. Mrs. Rizzo? Yes. Ms. Ty? Yes. Next. DRA PSS number 13, $569.80. Invoice number 120213, December services. So moved. Second. All those in favor, all those opposed, so voted. Uh, that's it for the encumbrances and invoices. Um, next on the agenda is the subcommittee reports with the ways and means on the paraprofessional contract ratification. Um, we had a meeting with the uh, ways and means and the committee as a whole prior to this. Uh, we have the contract in front of us. It shows a moderate increase on the daily rate. Um, the longevity got a, got a nice little raise on it. At this point, I believe we do need a vote to ratify the contract. I it's move to ratify the memorandum of understanding to be executed into a contract between the Revere School Committee and the Paraprofessionals Union. Second. Um, roll call, please. Mr. Ferranti? Yes. Ms. Gravelisi? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Ms. Pruitt? Yes. Mrs. Rizzo? Not voting. Ms. Ty? Yes. Um, at this point, I would like to call Ms. Pruitt for a report on the Shore Collaborative. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Ferranti. Um, last night was the Shore Collaborative. I just want to give a basic update. I will put their um, folder in the school committee file that we have in the main office. There, we now have 30 children enrolled in Shore Collaborative, and at, right at this time, our finances are completely paid off, and we're equal with them. I just want people to know Shore does do a lot of home teaching for parents who have special needs children in the city and I just want them to know the cost of it this in the last few months it's been fifty three thousand dollars to train parents how to handle and work with their special needs child so I just want people to be out there and realize that it's just not you know our kids go to shore and then come home we are training parents constantly and that is it Mr. Ferranti Thank you, Ms. Pruitt. Do we need a roll call? No. Okay. Um, any questions for Ms. Pruitt? If, if I could add one observation. Hi, right, Ms. Ty. They have been, not only do they go to the parents and then help, but they actually work when the kids come back with our teachers to help them right. with it, too. So it's, it's a both home and school connection. And by the way, thank you very much for going to those meetings. My pleasure. I enjoy it. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda is school department communications. I don't see any. Next. New business, communications from Matt Cruz regarding requests for proposals for food service management. Ms. Gravelisi. To Dr. Dakin from Matt Cruz, January 1st, 2015. Please request that the school committee approve the school department's initiative Initiation of the request for proposals with the City of Revere purchasing agent at the next scheduled school committee meeting for a food service management company for FY16, the 2015-2016 school year, with two possible extensions for FY17 and FY18, the 2016-2017 and the 2017-2018 school years. Thank you. Any questions? No. So, so, right. so moved. All right. Thank you. I think we need a roll call. All right. Let's have a roll call. Mr. Franti? Yes. Ms. Gravelisi? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Ms. Pruitt? Yes. Mrs. Rizzo? Yes. Ms. Ty? Yes. I'm so moved. I'm so moved to be here. Okay.
Okay, next on the agenda is late communications. I don't see any. Um, yes, actually. I do, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Go ahead, Ms. Grabalisi. To Dr. Paul Dakin from Angela Prizio regarding Verizon. Please have the school committee. Sorry. Please have the school committee formally recognize and approve the receipt of the attached grant from Verizon in FY15. The funds will be deposited in our school donations revolving account in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 71, Section 37A. Expenditure and progress reporting will be managed by Patricia DiGregorio, Garfield Middle School Principal. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Franti? Yes. Ms. Gravelisi? Yes. Mr. McGuire? Yes. Ms. Pruitt? Yes. Mrs. Rizzo? Yes. Ms. Tai? Yes. Um, any motions? Okay. Um, any public comments? Payment of bills. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, I need a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion, motion to, to adjourn. adjourn the meeting till until February tenth at five thirty. Good night to all.